In this video, you'll find a lesson on how to multiply using the standard algorithm. I'll talk about a couple common strategies many students use prior to learning the standard algorithm, and then guide you through a few examples as well. The objective of this lesson is to help you be able to multiply multi-digit whole numbers efficiently using the standard algorithm. Let's start by defining two vocabulary words that you'll need to know so that you can follow along with the examples. The first one is a factor. A factor is simply a number that multiplies by another number. In this example, 342 and 57 are both factors. When two factors are multiplied together, the result is called a product. In this example, 19,494 is the product. I'm now going to review two common strategies that are stepping stones to the standard algorithm to help frame your perspective and number sense so the standard algorithm is easier to understand. Let's start with the lattice method. Lattice utilizes a grid to help keep numbers organized. It helps separate the multiplication and addition processes and is especially useful for regrouping to add numbers easier. When completing the lattice method, we begin by creating a grid that matches the digits in our numbers. Diagonals are drawn to help organize the place values and the carried digits. Here we have a three by two grid since we have a three digit by two digit problem. We'll start by multiplying the tens place in 57 by each digit in 342. We'll start by multiplying the tens place in 57 by each digit in 342. This five really represents 50. 50 times two is 100, so we're gonna write the product 100. Now notice we only have space for two digits. We're gonna leave the last zero off here. So here five by two is 10, five by four is 20, five by three is 15. Next, we'll move on to the ones place in 57 and use the seven. Seven by two, gets us 14, one goes in the tens, four goes in the ones. Next, seven by four is 28. This is really seven by 40, which is 280. If you take a look at the diagonal place values, you can see that is true. Finally, seven by three is 21. Enter those here. We'll add the diagonal rows to get our final product. Here we just have a four. Here, zero plus one plus eight is gonna get us nine. One plus zero plus two plus one is gonna get us four. Two plus five plus two gets us nine. And this is just a one. If you ever add up and get a double digit number, just carry it to the left. The lattice method hides many of the zeros that we'll then see in the partial products method next. Now let's look at the partial products method. Partial products uses place value concepts. It enhances number sense rather than relying on memorizing a specific algorithm. We begin by expanding each of our factors so that you can see the true value of each digit. 342 is expanded into 300 plus 40 plus 2. 57 is expanded into 50 plus 7. We're then going to start a series of smaller multiplication problems to obtain partial products. Eventually, we'll add these partial products up to find the product of 342 and 57. We work our way up from the smaller place values to the bigger, so we end up moving right to left. We'll start with this seven, which is in the ones, and multiply it by two, which is in the ones place. That gets us 14, our first partial product. Take the same seven in the ones and multiply it by 40, which is in the tens. It gets us 280. We use a seven one more time in the ones and multiply it by 300, which is in the hundredth place, to get 2,100. At this point, we're done using the seven. Now let's move on to the 50, which is in the tens place and go by two, which is in the ones place. 50 by two is 100. Same 50 in the tens and go by 40, which is also in the tens. That's gonna get us 2000. Finally, we'll take the 50 one more time in the tens and go by 300, which is in the hundreds place to get 15,000. These three partial products came from the 50. The first three rows are partial products that came from the seven, and the bottom three rows are partial products that came from the 50. We'll add up all these partial products to get four, nine, four, nine, and one. The sum of these partial products is 19,494. That brings us to the standard algorithm. The standard algorithm is more abstract due to the carrying nature of the next place value. It assumes you understand the place values and don't need to draw the grid from lattice or all the zeros from partial products. 
While it's quicker and more efficient, it gives your brain more responsibility to keep numbers organized and understand what each digit represents. If you haven't noticed by now, understanding place values is key when multiplying. We start off by lining up all our factors by their place values. The factors with less digits always goes on bottom. Notice how 57 is on bottom. We'll start by multiplying 7 by 2, which is 14. We write the 4 in the 1's place and the 1 in the 10's place. Next, we'll multiply 7 by 4 to get 28. We'll add this 1 on top to make it 29. We'll write the 9 in the 10's and carry the 2 to the 100's. Keep in mind that 7 and 4 was really 7 by 40, which is really 280. That little 1 above it was really a 10, which made 290. So if you're seeing the 2 and 9, although we're writing 2 and 9, it's really representing 290. We'll use a 7 one more time and multiply by the 3 to get 21. Add this 2 to get 23. This 23 really represents 2300. Once we're done using the 7, we cross it out along with any numbers associated with it. And we move on to this 5, which is really a 50. We put a 0 down here as a placeholder. 5 by 2 is going to get us 10. Write the 0, carry the 1. 5 by 4 gets us 20. Add the 1 to get 21. Carry the 2. Last but not least, 5 by 3 is 15. Add this 2 to get 17. This 2, 3, 9, 4 is really just the condensed version of the three partial products from the 7. And this 1, 7, 1, 0, 0 is really a condensed version from the three partial products from the 50. Notice with the standard algorithm, we only have to add two rows instead of six. We'll add these numbers up to get a final product of 19,494. Now that you have some background knowledge, let's try some examples together. Remember to take the time to pause, speed up, or rewatch any parts that you need to. In example one, let's try multiplying by a single digit. Notice how the five, which has less digits, is written on bottom. We'll start with the five here. Five by two gets us 10. We'll write the zero in the one's place and carry the one. Next, we'll go five by four to get 20. We'll add this one to get 21. The product here is 210. Let's try another example here together. Even though the three is written first in the problem, write it on bottom because it has less digits. We'll start by multiplying this three by the eight to get 24. We'll put the four and carry the two. Next, we'll multiply 3 by 6 to get 18, and carry the 2 to get 20. The product here is 204. Now that we've tried a couple together, I want you to try some on your own. Pause the video now and try this example. Take out something to write with and on, and give it a go. Shortly, the solution and work will all appear on the screen for you to check your understanding. So, how'd you do? Did you get 288? Don't worry, if you messed up, it's part of the learning process. Compare your work with mine and see if everything lines up. If you made a mistake, find it, understand it, own it, and learn from it. Let's try another. Pause the video now and give it a try. Here's the work and solution that you should have. In example two, let's try multiplying by a double digit. Notice how it doesn't matter which number goes on bottom because they both have two digits. We'll start with this 2 in the bottom 1's place. 2 by 3 gets us 6, kind of nice we don't have to carry. 2 by 8 gets us 16. Now that we're done with the 2, we'll cross it out and move on to the 1. Since this 1 is really a 10, we'll write the 0 here. 1 by 3 gets us 3, and 1 by 8 gets us 8. We're then going to add up these partial products. Here we get 6, 9, and 9. The product here is 996. Now try one on your own. Pause the video and give it a go. And pause it when you're ready to see the solution. Here's the work and answer you should have. In example three, let's try multiplying by larger digits. 25 is written on bottom because it has less digits and we'll start with the five. Five by two gets us 10 carry the 1. 5 by 7 gets us 35. Add the 1 to get 36. Carry the 3. 5 by 4 gets us 20. 
plus 3 is 23, so carry the 2. Finally, 5 by 6 gets us 30, plus 2, which is 32. We're done using this 5, so we'll cross it out along with all the numbers used with it, and move on to this 2, which is really a 20. We'll write the 0 here. 2 by 2 gets us 4. 2 by 7 gets us 14, carry the 1. 2 by 4 gets us 8, add the 1 to get 9. Finally, 2 by 6 is going to get us 12. Here we have a 0, here we have 10, carry the 1, this is an 8. 2 plus 9 is 11, carry the 1, this will be a 6, this is a 1. Final product here is 161,800. Now try one on your own. Pause the video and give it a try. Check it over and see how you did. In example four, let's try an estimating strategy to check the reasonability of our solutions. We've already done this problem, but let's check the reasonability of the product 210. We start off by looking at this 42 and round it. What is 42 close to? We round to the tens here since we have tens digits and we will round it down to 40. It's definitely closer to 40 than it is to 50. The five, however, already only has one digit, so we'll just keep it the same. Now that we've rounded it, notice how we have one leading digit that's not a zero. If we multiply five by four, we get 20. Don't forget the extra zero after the four and 40, so we'll make it 200. 210 seems like a reasonable product because our estimate here is 200. Keep in mind, our estimate is a little bit lower than the actual answer 210 because we rounded 42 down. Let's try one more together before you practice them on your own. Here we have 68 times 3. 68, I'll round that one up to 70. That um, makes sense. And 3 only has one digit, so we'll just keep it the same. We have one digit each, which makes it easy if we know our multiplication facts. 7 times 3 is going to be 21, and let's put a 0 on after for the 70. Our estimate here is 210. That makes 204 pretty reasonable uh, for an answer because it's a little bit lower. Now, again, our estimate 210 should be higher here because we rounded 68 up to 70. Here are four more estimating examples you can try. Pause the video and do them on your own. When you're ready, unpause the video to see how you did. Feel free to pause the video and check how you did. In example five, let's try some application questions. Ah, the dreaded word problems many people's worst nightmares. At the end of the day, try to understand that all math problems in isolation are kind of useless unless we apply it to some context and situation. So that's what we're gonna do here. The public library contains 848 shelves and on average, each shelf holds 64 books. The question is, how many books would you predict there to be in total? I've identified two important pieces of information and realized that this really is a repeated addition problem or a multiplication problem as a shortcut. We're going to multiply 848 shelves by 64 books per shelf to get the total number of books. Notice how I set up the problem. Let's give it a go. We'll start with this 4 here. 4 by 8 gets us 32. Carry the 3. 4 by 4 is 16. Add the 3. It's going to be 19. Carry the 1. Last, 4 by 8 is going to be 32 plus 1 to get 33. Done with the 4. 3 and 1, moving on to the 6, which is really a 60. 6 by 8, 48, carry the 4. 6 by 4, 24, plus 4 is 28, carry the 2. 6 by 8, 48, plus 2 is 50. Add up the partial products to get 2. 17, carry the 1. 12, carry the 1. 4, 5. Let's do a quick estimate to make sure our answer seems reasonable. 848, let's round that down to 800. 64, let's round that down to 60. 6 by 8 is 48. We should have three zeros. Our estimate is lower than our actual, which makes sense because we rounded both numbers down. I'm convinced this is reasonable here. I believe here that the total number of books would be 54,272. Now that we've done one of these application problems together, I'd like to try one on your own. Pause the video now and give it a try. When you're ready, unpause it to check to see how you did.
you should have gotten 157,384 votes. That concludes our lesson for today. I hope you found this lesson useful in improving your understanding on how to use the standard algorithm for multiplication. Best of luck.